Okay, this video is going to be, is Darwinism bogus? Um, part one. So we'll just kind of give a quick overview, some stuff you might find interesting. Some say that Darwinism is a religion. I believe that it is used as if it is a religion, as if Darwin being the founder, the modern universities are like the churches, the college professors are like the, the priests, the Communist Party is like the Pope of Darwinism. Uh, Richard Dawkins is the head of the Evolutionary Inquisition. Um, intelligent design proponents uh, in terms of biology professors, they immediately are fired if they suggest that intelligent design might be correct or relevant even just for even teaching it to students. Um, and there's lots of hoaxes if you look back through the history of evolutionary uh, biology teaching, you know, the Heckel's drawings of the embryos, the pepper moth, you know, having them stuck to the trees to take the fo to, to make images of them for their study. Um, Piltdown Man was uh, also a hoax. The whole Lucy thing was exaggerated with regard to the skeleton of the skull, the frontal bones, the hands, the pelvis, the feet. It's more chimp-like than human-like um, in reality. Um, and, and basically, you know, why do people make such a big deal about it? Why is there such a fuss? Because behind the idea of the science of Darwinism versus intelligent design, there's a strong metaphysical worldview. Um, basically, the idea that there is a God, humans are created in the image of God, the idea that humans deserve natural rights, freedom, free will, capitalism, all that stuff kind of goes with um, a God-based worldview versus the atheism worldview with Darwinism as a creation story that promotes what, you know, what rulers want. They want slavery. They want total control of the population. They don't want the population to have any rights. They want to have the option of eugenics. You know, like you manage farm animals. You breed the ones you think you can get a profit out of them and you get rid of the other ones. The old ones, you send them to the glue factory. A ruler wants to manage his population like that. It's been like that since the beginning of time. Slavery, serfdom, communism, eugenics, population control with the ruler considering their slaves, their serfs as being like property, kind of an ex similar to farm animals. And so what I'm saying is without that God-based uh, worldview, natural rights, the subjects of a, of, a, of a country have essentially no rights. All their rights are insecure. At a whim, they can be taken away. Okay, so here's, uh, and also people don't really understand Charles Darwin. Charles Darwin was an aristocrat from England, and his theories justified English imperialism, whereby they could go around to other countries and enslave the population. You know, I'm half Irish, so I know a lot about the history of what the English did to the Irish. You know, they starved them. They killed a lot of them with the uh, potato famine. You know, an Irishman in the 1800s, even the early 1900s, was not allowed to own a horse. Uh, they didn't want him getting educated. My real name, by the way, in Ireland is McCrory, okay, son of the red-haired king. My name, Rogers, comes from Rouge. You know, French aristocrats, you know, shaped English language, and that means the red ones. It was changed by the English, okay? So it's like a slave name. I've seen the old books of my... Uh, my uh, grandfather, my father, when they were kids, and I've seen their name McCrory change to Rogers, okay? Um, there is, uh, here's Darwin. Here's how Darwin talks. And again, England, you know, brutalized the, the people of India, brutalized the Irish and some other places. So here's some quotes from Charles Darwin. There is no doubt that the various races, when carefully compared and measured, uh, differ from each other. Their mental characteristics are very distinct, chiefly, in their emotional, but partly in their intellectual faculties. Um, Darwin also, uh, his opinion of women, he said, the chief distinction in intellectual powers of the two sexes is shown by man's attaining a higher eminence in whatever he takes up than women. Average mental power in a man must be above that of a woman. No woman has ever contributed a single profound lasting idea to the world. Charles Darwin continues, at some future period, the civilized races of man will almost certainly exterminate the savage races. Okay, that's an important point. Let's say that one again. Charles Darwin said, at some future time, the civilized races of man will almost certainly exterminate the savage races. Excepting in the case of man himself, hardly anyone is so ignorant as to allow his worst animals to breed. So the average person doesn't realize it, but a typical ruler just considers them a farm animal, okay? And, you know, people say, oh, well, how could I be so pessimistic? No, that's reality. It's always been like that, and people should be aware of that, okay? Rulers love Darwinism because it says the ruler essentially is God. If there is no God-based worldview and an external God, 
then the ruler has is essentially God. Whatever they say goes. There's no counter appeal. There is no counter argument. Um, Darwinism, it's great for dehumanizing people. Um, so anyone that the ruler doesn't like or thinks is inferior, they can sterilize them. The United States sterilized tens of thousands of people in the early 1900s, okay? Um, they can just rob them and steal their property. That's been common from, you know, the beginning of uh, recorded time. And also they can just kill them, get rid of them if they don't want, okay? Um, you know, Hitler's vocabulary, he just called people he didn't like or thought were uh, inferior, just called them useless eaters, life not worth living, and that's a pretty typical thing. Anytime a country wants to go to war with another country, they just label the other you know, population evil, bad, and then it's okay to do whatever you want to. Okay, Margaret Sanger in the early 1900s of Planned Parenthood fame was a major proponent of eugenics, population control of poor people and minorities. So what I'm basically saying here is Darwinism is used as a religion and the moral standard of uh, a ruler that wants eugenics and population control. And it has been standardized in this country in our universities. People just accept it. They don't, most people don't know anything about it, okay? Um, so it's the atheistic religion of Hitler, Stalin, Mao, other tyrants, and in American universities. That's a strong statement, and in American universities. Though many of those universities, like Harvard, for example, were founded with a God-based worldview, but that's gone. Long gone, actually, unfortunately. And, you know, what's to stop them from wanting euthanasia of old people? They're not paying any taxes. What value are they to the state? You know, people think this stuff doesn't exist. This has been standard for a long time, and you should be aware of it. Okay, so we're going to continue here with Darwinism. Um, it's a creation story of atheism. And by the way, Darwinism has nothing to do with the origin of life. You know, variety within a species is a totally different subject than origin of life. But people think that Darwinism somehow explains the origin of life. Darwinism has no explanation whatsoever, no good explanation for the origin of life. RNA world can't explain protein world and vice versa. And, you know, here's Francis Crick, co-discoverer of the DNA double helix. He said, any man with all knowledge available to us now could only state that in some sense the origin of life appears at the moment to be almost a miracle. So many are the conditions which had to be satisfied to get it going. And that also includes Richard Dawkins. He's sort of the, one of the most famous uh, Darwinists and atheists in the world at this time. And he also says that origin of life might be panspermia. Panspermia is the idea that you know, life was seeded on Earth from some other planet. But by the way, there's been no evidence whatsoever for any life on any other planet, okay? Okay, the simplest forms of life require a minimum of at least 250 proteins. Well, where did those proteins come from? You know, proteins can be very, 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 very complex. Where did the info come from to make those proteins? You know, how can you do that if you don't have a whole uh, RNA, DNA apparatus in place for protein synthesis, which is a very big, complicated thing? Natural selection is an editor. It is not a creator. It can't generate the type of genetic variety necessary to create all these different species. A mutation is very much like an audio CD being scratched by a paper clip. It's usually destructive. They induce tens of thousands of mutations in fruit flies, and they only get one of three outcomes. A normal fruit fly, a defective fruit fly, or a dead fruit fly. They never produce a new type of fly in that way, okay? Uh, natural selection selects the fittest because they are fittest. Survival of the fittest because they're fittest. That's a tautology. That's untestable. Um, people say, oh, you know, God-based worldview is unscientific. Well, take a look at this in Darwinism, all right? Uh, and by the way, I majored in Darwin uh, evolutionary biology when I was in college as an A student. Okay, so, you know, first thing anybody else does, oh, you don't believe in Darwin. You're stupid. Okay, yeah, right. Um, let's see. And by the way, the, a lot of the absolute best scientists will see it exactly as I do. I've read all their books. Okay, uh, and by the way, if you want one book, I would say this is a good book, uh, a good all-around book, Evolution 2.0. I like this guy because he's an engineer, and he writes in a way that's very clear for the layman. His name is Perry Marshall. The book's Evolution 2.0. If you want to see a movie that real quickly um, hits a lot of uh, topics really good is Expel by Ben Stein. He's very smart, very funny. Okay, um... Let's see. Richard Dawkins, you know, he's sort of the big famous Darwinist atheist. He refuses to debate Stephen Meyer, the PhD guy who's the author of Darwin's Doubt. He wrote that in his book, Return of the God Hypothesis. Meyer's really smart. Dar Dawkins, in my opinion, is scared to debate him because he knows Meyer will defeat him in, in debate. It'll be pretty obvious. Okay. Where does the information come from? 
If you saw your name written on the sidewalk, written in the sand, written on a wall, you would know that a literate person had written your name, right? Well, the human genome is written with 3.3 billion, that's billion base pairs. Where does that information come from? Who wrote it? Whoever wrote it must be very, 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 very smart. People who really know biology, who deal with it, it's incredible. It's so many orders of magnitude beyond anything humans can do that you just see it's ridiculous. We can barely describe embryology, how you know 100 billion neurons go to their locations and connect up with the glial cells and all this. Then 100 trillion synapses are formed. We can just barely hint at how it all happens. Okay, and you know the randomness. Can a sandstorm build a cathedral, a temple, a mosque, or any other useful building? No. Mutations are biological noise. They're almost always destructive, harmful. Sometimes they're silent, okay? Almost never are they beneficial. And the likelihood of a whole bunch of beneficial mutations, you know, millions of them, all of a sudden happening together and being in the germline to propagate a new species, not that likely. Mutations in this uh, Darwinian, neo-Darwinian theory, it can explain variation within a species. You can breed a bunch of different types of dogs, but you can't change a dog into a cat, okay? You can't change, you know, remember the fairy tale, uh, the princess kisses the frog and the frog turns into a prince? Okay, that's what Darwinism says. You know, a little uh, salt water in a pond and a lightning bolt hits it and voila, you've got fish, then you've got amphibians, then you've got birds, then you've got mammals. No, I'm not buying that, okay? Um, so if you can't make, let's say, a useful building out of a sandstorm, how can things billions of times more complicated, the human eye, the human brain, the human immune system, the clotting system, flagella, etc., our metabolic pathways, how could that all have just spontaneously uh, appeared out of nothing? Yeah, right. Got to get the slide. Okay, here we go. This is the last slide. Okay, so the Cambrian expansion... Um, that happened about uh, hundreds of millions of years ago. And uh, far from showing a gradual change, oh, this is Ann Coulter from Godless. She's actually really clever and funny. I, I'm surprised. She actually wrote the funniest book about ev evolution, this Godless book. Okay, so here she is. Far from showing gradual change with one species slowly giving way to another, as Darwin hypothesized, the fossil record showed vast numbers of new species suddenly appearing out of nowhere remaining largely unchanged for millions of years and then disappearing, almost like there was a big flood or something. Okay, and then here's Dawkins. Without gradualism and the record of the rock, the fossils, it does not show gradualism. So here's Mr. Atheist Darwinist. Without gradualism, we're back to a miracle. Okay, so in the Cambrian, there was a sudden appearance of multiple new phyla. And then there's also this idea of infinite time. Well, you know, the Big Bang was about 14 billion years ago. Uh, perhaps even 11 million year, billion years ago, according to some people. But uh, life on Earth arose 3.8 billion years ago. That's not infinite time, okay? So I don't think the princess kissing a frog is going to turn it into a prince anytime soon. So just to be aware of this, that when somebody aggressively is promoting, you know, atheistic Darwinism, a lot of times it's because they're really trying to promote something else, you know, sort of a tyrant worldview, etc. And just be aware of that because... Darwinism as a science has got lots of problems and it's, it's completely irrelevant and bogus as a creation story. And it's good to know that because it can be used against you in an indirect way and you should know that.